Hello and welcome. Today we'll discuss about different types of ML problems. All ML problems can be broadly classified in two groups, supervised learning and unsupervised learning. Let's start with supervised learning first. We will start with two examples to understand the concept. This is a plot of size of a house, selling price of the house, and these are training examples. Given size of a new house, we want to know what will be its selling price. Second problem. This is a plot of height of a person and weight of a person and we have classified them as male and female. These are training examples. Given height and weight of a new person, we want to know his or her gender. Both these problems have one thing in common. The training examples are labeled or in other words, there is a target variable to be predicted. In the first example, our target variable is price of the house, which we wanted to predict for new examples. We knew that the output of our model should be a continuous variable, price of the house. What is this continuous variable now? Continuous variables are basically numbers which can assume any value between a given range. Continuous variables are measured but cannot be counted. Examples, height of students in a class or price of a commodity or temperature variation during the day. So for example, temperature varying throughout the day is a continuous variable. And say for example, the lowest temperature is recorded as 20 degrees Celsius and highest is recorded as 30 degrees Celsius, then between these two range, between these two numbers, the temperature can assume any value. For example, 25.3 degrees Celsius or 29.7 degrees Celsius. In the second example, our training examples were labeled as male or female, a categorical variable, which should also be the output of our prediction algorithm. Oh, what is this categorical variable now? As the name suggests, categorical data represent different categories or types of something and is often in the form of text. There are nominal categorical variables that don't have any set order or hierarchy in them. Colors like orange, blue, green, etc. Gender of a person like male, female or smartphone companies, etc. There are also ordinal categorical variables who have an inherent order or hierarchy in them. Examples, first, second, third. From this, we know that someone is better than someone else. More examples like high, medium, low, or very good, good, average, poor, very poor. Ordinal variables are frequently used to measure qualitative quantities like happiness, satisfaction, utility, etc. Now let's get to some formal definition of supervised learning. Supervised learning is the machine learning task of learning a function that maps an input to an output based on example input output pairs. It infers a function from labeled training data consisting of a set of training examples like we saw in our two examples. If you are still not able to understand the actual meaning of supervised learning, don't worry. You will get it once we discuss unsupervised learning. While we were busy understanding supervised learning, we went one step ahead to also become aware of the two branches of supervised learning. Let's see how. Regression. This is a classic example of regression, a supervised learning where the target is a continuous variable. Note that while we used only one feature, size of the house, here for ease of representation, we shall see ML problems can have thousands of features. It will then be impossible to show it on a 2D space. Classification. A supervised learning problem which has categorical target is classification. This is a problem of binary classification where the target is a categorical variable with two categories. In our case, male and female. We can also have a case of multi-class classification where there are more than two categories. This problem will become a multi-class classification problem if we add a third gender in it. We have got a basic understanding of supervised learning and its two branches in regression and classification. 
we will discuss each of these topics in detail in the coming days for now let's jump into the lake of unsupervised learning let us understand this with the help of an example this is the number of shares sold to a person in a year and this is the average price of shares bought by the person and the blue dots are customers of a lifestyle brand so for example a single blue dot here represents what is the number of shirt he has bought say for example he's bought three shirts and on the y-axis we have all the average price of those three shirts given number of shirts sold to a person and the average price of those shirts in a year a lifestyle brand wants to segment their customer base on purchasing behavior so that they can promote different coupons based on characteristics of that segment in this problem unlike supervised learning we don't have any labeled data or target variable all we can really do is to group or cluster the population so that people in the same cluster have similar characteristics there are actually two problems embedded into one first we want to know how many segments are best suited for our need and second coming up with the logic to group our training examples in those many clusters or segments in this problem we can easily identify three segment of customers with prevalent characteristics like high medium and low spending but the problem is not always this simple in reality we might have thousands of features and millions of training examples for which we need algorithms to identify the segment for us this was example of a popular unsupervised learning problem which is clustering there are other applications of unsupervised learning like anomaly detection principal component analysis etc which we will study in detail as we move further now let's get to some formal definition of unsupervised learning unsupervised unsupervised learning is a type of machine learning that looks for previously undetected patterns in a data set with no pre-existing labels and with a minimum of human supervision today we have taken a giant leap let us take a moment to recall what we have learned today we learned that supervised learning is all about learning a function that maps input to output from a labeled data set we understood that unsupervised learning is collection of techniques through which we try to find some undetected patterns in an unlabeled data set we also got a chance to sneak in into different branches of supervised learning which are regression and classification we also saw example of a popular unsupervised learning application known as clustering that is all for now for today thanks for watching and if you liked the video and you liked the content then please subscribe and like the video and you have if you have any doubts then please raise them in the comment section stay tuned for more thanks